guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black, here with another episode of Off the Cuff, a very special episode because we are now coming up on 1 million views on Behind the Curtain since we posted it in mid June. And so today I have a very special guest, Jessica Calais Sheffield. Hello. Who you guys know as the director, writer, and project manager of Behind the Curtain. Yeah, it's always great to be back here. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. And uh, yeah, oh my gosh, we're so close. One, mil <laughs> One million. <laughs> One million views on YouTube. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, seriously, this is uh, this is a fantastic milestone. Thank you so much. Uh, Jess, you were kind of pointing out, like, I had about 220,000 subscribers when we posted Behind the Curtain, and you did the math on that for, like, what what might we be able to expect the view count to be? Because, like, while well, you're working on the project, we don't really, you know, you don't go in with expectations with that kind of stuff, but it is kind of good to have an idea of it. Yeah, yeah, like, the number one thing is you... <sighs> If you start thinking about, I have to make this many views and I have to make this many subscriptions, that's not very conducive to creativity, to real art. But, uh, you know, I wanted to look at, okay, what's realistic here? You've got about, or you had about 220,000 subscribers at the time. And uh, so about 10% of those people actually will care and interact. <laughs> so I figured if we had 20,000 hits, you know, 20,000 views, that that's great that mm -hmm. is the statistic probability of of based off of your subscribers what we should be having and now that we're we, we blew past that of course we blew past <laughs> two hundred and twenty thousand views and i was like okay we are way past statistic probability <laughs> here and now that we're getting to a million it's like woo <laughs> yeah boy no, it's 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 seriously humbling, and um, the the response to it has been fantastic. It was really exciting to watch the chat as it was happening, and people going like, "Oh my God, there's Sam! Oh my God, the angel, the angel! Whoa!" That that was the hypest chat. That was a <laughs> lot of fun having Mon Monpian, you and I just like just just hype manning the whole time. Yes, and at the very end when everybody's like, "Wow, that was a great video! Thanks so much!" We were like, "Smiley face, smiley face. Wait, <laughs> there's more." I still but wait. <laughs> there's more. I still actually go back occasionally and rewatch that chat. It's kind of like an ah yes, that that went really well. That was really exciting to watch happen. Billy Mays here. Do I have a deal for you? <laughs> we got one to... extra preview. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We did put together a little a little uh, preview compilation of all like the little promo animations we had done up until that point. Um, most of them were like, you know, jokes that happened during production is like, oh my god, Bendy is absolutely the kind of character who would say this. We have we have to do that. Yeah, we, we were just having fun kind of memeing in the meantime because uh, with the project, the, the way it runs, we, we can't always 100% be working on the project because different people are doing different things. You can't always be working on this stuff at all times, so maybe, you know, the, uh, the 3D animators were doing blocking poses that we, mm -hmm. we didn't have the skills to do, but we, you know, we could do other things like joke about the characters and, and meme about different situations. And that, you know, th that was nice because it ended up becoming all, you know, uh, advertisements for behind the curtain. Well, yeah. And speaking of memeing um, and having fun with the process, uh, you guys had a lot of really interesting questions about the process and the production of behind the curtain, as well as the final product. And we kind of figured it'd be fun to go through the comment section in the video, as well as some of the off the cuff episodes and uh, try to address and answer some of the questions you guys might have. Have. I am always down for that. I, yes. I love seeing uh, I love seeing the reactions, you know, like the, the comment section <laughs> is uh, is a treasure trove of like, ah, yes, a man of culture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, you got the joke. Yes, exactly. Um, the first question here is from Lee Wrapped 1724 and uh, Lee Wrapped asks, are you going to show us some unused content? I did notice that a lot has changed from the 2D animation to the singing, and I'm really curious if you'd make an episode about that. Um, yes, actually. Oh yeah, a lot there, <laughs> yeah, there was a lot that changed from the start to finish. For anybody who was there for the initial live streams where I was doing the first pass of storyboards, um, I think I've explained this a, a little bit of this in a previous Off the Cuff episode, but basically it started with some very small, quick thumbnails done in a sketchbook that I transferred to Toon Boom Harmony while on those streams, and then from that point on, brought in Jess as the writer to really tighten up the story and, you know, 
push it in the direction that behind the curtain ended up going in. And so a lot of scenes got adjusted um, or plain, you know, removed, replaced, and tweaked. Um, so one of the <laughs> I, I think the the most infamous example of a, of a scene adjustment came quite literally in the middle of a stream where you you just had this vi- <laughs> you had uh, Henry reacting uh, to to Angel mm-hmm. and it was just very sterile and yes. very boring and and very p- pedestrian as uh, <laughs> pedestrian. as uh, one of my favorite actors would describe it. <laughs> and I think I just asked a very simple question, right? Yes, yes, you asked, uh, Haley, is uh, is Henry the type of man who'd find a woman like the angel attractive? <laughs> I, <laughs> I blew up. I was like, no, nah. And it because it it wasn't even the question that set it off. It's because you asked us a question. I knew the answer, and instead of saying yes like a normal freaking person i jumped <laughs> off into like three different directions and was like henry's not a pervert <laughs> it's like what <laughs> it's like whoa like, we we didn't talk about we didn't say that <laughs> That was the beginning of realizing that uh, uh, Alice Angel really needed a character overhaul. Yes, yeah, the version of the angel that I had initially uh, conceived of for Behind the Curtain was very, very judgy, kind of like sassy, maybe, more just kind of like this stoic, I'm going to judge the hell out of you while I'm over here being, you know, a victim. And it's like, oh, I love that kind of character. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, the- <laughs> I'm sitting here going like, okay, all right, let me put myself in the position of, of our, our hero here, Henry. What kind of a woman could actually get him to do what the woman wants him to do? <laughs> not what's currently on the screen. <laughs> not that. Not bobblehead Betty Boop. Um, so, oh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that, that version of the angel was... Uh, uh, shall we say, cut pretty early on. Um, and so a lot of the animations that I had done for that version of Behind the Curtain, um, you guys probably remember the animation streams as well. I'd done three shots, and it was like the, uh, it was the, I believe the initial introduction to the character as well as the now it's easy to see how one could be so charmed uh, bits. And it is very bouncy and cute, and I still like how those animations turned out, but the personality wasn't coming through. And so uh, a lot of those, a lot of those shots got adjusted, redone, and uh, yeah, we I still have them saved. Could absolutely put together. Yeah, the, kind of the a animation is still great. You know, oh, thank you. Even though the character, you know, even though the character got changed, it's kind of that whole. Um, I I'm sure you're kind of you know you're kind of like I don't want I don't want to see this animation. But <laughs> anyone who doesn't animate is like, oh boy, more animation. <laughs> Two cakes. Wow! Yeah. Two no, cakes. Well, and, and the nice thing, too, is it's kind of like going back through your old sketchbooks, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm embarrassed about this thing that I did, but look at the improvement, you know? Um, so it's kind, yeah. of a, kind of a fun thing to compare. And the other thing, too, is we do have the original passes of the storyboards and how those evolved and into the animation process. Uh, if you guys... Um, are familiar at all with the animation process, especially with 3D, it's very important to get the blocking stage down. Originally, I was just gonna, like, having the 3D animators jump straight into animation, and Jess was like, whoa, 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 hang hang on a second. We need to focus on getting the staging right. Well, it wasn't actually me that that did that first. It was our dramaturg, Mon Pian, who is uh, um, very savvy about all this kind of stuff. And uh, she pointed out... um, Something that I I knew, but it it didn't enter my mind at the time. It's like, hey, we've got to do blocking passes. We've got to do uh, actually putting the characters where they're going to be to make sure that our movements work, to make sure the scenes work. And what that ends up being, if you go watch old Pixar DVDs and look at the extras, are these hilarious videos (laughs) where everyone is going through the entire thing, T-posing. That's right. It was Mon Pian. God... (laughs) It was really awesome having her on the production. I still, I still kind of can't believe we had somebody with that skill set working on our, our teeny tiny little, uh, you know, shoestring budget project. But it really turned out all the better for it. I, I swear, every time I get the opportunity to work with Mon Pian, I just sit there going like, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, <laughs> the, the world is this weird, this weird mix of like meeting people that you don't expect to meet because there's no way I could afford her <laughs> services otherwise. Right. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, let's see. We've got another question here from Robert's Little Channel 2536 who says, uh, this is actually a recurring sentiment I've noticed. I find the way you draw Alice hot, and I'm ashamed for it. 
Do not be ashamed for it. It was very intentional. Do not be ashamed. <laughs> Let not your jimmies be rustled, for the <laughs> rustling was intentive. Absolutely intentional. Oh my god, no, the angel was probably the probably the, the biggest change from the start to the final version of Behind the Curtain. Uh, I've talked about her briefly before in terms of, you know, how the character got changed uh, from, you know, the initial concept. But, uh, no, she was a lot of fun to animate. Yeah, I think uh, might as well bring up this other question that someone had. Something like, why did you make Angel so bloody attractive? Yes. <laughs> uh, you, you guys have to, you, you guys are thinking of this in the wrong way. It's not, why did we make her so attractive? It's like, why wouldn't we make her so attractive? <laughs> So there's, yes, there's no reason. Yes, yeah. Die, die. One four one two was the one who asked uh, the bloody attractive comment. It's like, well, it's because we, because we gotta, we gotta. Yeah, make it hot. Make it hot. Well, I mean, why, why would you make something that wasn't pleasant to look at? Precisely. Yes, you can look at it in a very scientific. And she's kind of very way. pleasant to look at. She is very pleasant to look at. <laughs> Henry thinks so. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 here's the thing. It's like Henry thinks so. And and it's it's not believable unless that's the case, right? So it's like, look, if if we didn't make her attractive, why, how could anyone believe that a, a competent guy like Henry would care mm -hmm. about trying to fix fix problem that he comes across? It's like, you know, dames. Yeah, can't live <laughs> with him. Can't live without him. <laughs> dames. God. Well, you had some uh, some interesting things to say about like Henry's personality and what kind of character the angel would have needed to be in order to bring that side of Henry out. Yeah. So Henry Henry as a character um, was a fun tackle, you know, because uh, the the first thing you got to do if you're writing a story is like, well, what what are you trying to say, and who are you using to say it, and what what kind of people are they? So. That's, that was the, really the joke about, like, <laughs> is Henry the kind of guy who would find Angel attractive? Um, because that really is the question. It's like, well, what kind of guy is Henry? And uh, I, I think there are, there are two uh, questions I see, I see in our, our comment collection here that I can address at the same time. One is, why does he look like a young Popeye? And the other is, is he going to get a chance to sing? <laughs> he practically is Popeye. <laughs> That was actually one of the main uh, design inspirations I had for him back when I drew him, like, gosh, when I first got the question, what do you think Henry would look like as a cartoon? Popeye. Popeye. <laughs> peak character design already. <laughs> And then, you know, it is, uh, th this whole thing is kind of uh, reminiscent of the Max Fleischer Studios issues, and Max Fleischer Studios worked with Paramount to do Popeye, of course. Um, but as, as a character, Henry as the character, his whole thing is he's a hothead, uh, he's got a temper on him, and he's very arrogant. Mm -hmm. So what kind of trouble would a man like that get himself into and that's where the whole story came up between the director and the animator which is what henry is the animator and uh uh you guys know him as joey drew i like to call him max from mm -hmm. max fleischer and max bialystock and max lord and a bunch of other max <laughs> He's just um, Max. He's just Max. But yeah, so so we we kind of shaped him as a character, and uh, the Popeye design just kind of naturally came out because I think uh, you had the idea, Haley, to have him be an ex ex army guy. He was drafted. He got yeah. pulled away from the studio. And after, I, I like that idea. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Like back in, in the 30s, we can absolutely have the draft in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the twist though is he, he wanted to get away anyway. Yeah. Like he was not getting along with Max. And that's the whole drama of, um, you know, behind the curtain. And we get that nice little flashback that you showed with your illustrations of uh, young Henry, right? Yeah, that fight was actually one of the one of the other things that changed uh, pretty significantly from the original storyboards. Because what I had originally boarded out was, you know, Henry sees the note, he's not happy about it, he storms into Max's office, and they have a fight about it. I thought it was pretty good, you know, I thought it was like, oh yeah, okay, they have their their, their, their fight, they, they argue, and Henry storms out of the room, and it's like, that's it, that's, they're, they're done. But, uh, when, uh, when you came in and started, uh, started being like, alright, right, what kind of character is Henry, really? Ultimately, I think, uh, I think I was like, alright, now, now he's gonna grab him by the collar here, and you were like, <gasps> Yes! <laughs> like, grab him by the collar! <laughs> oh. I'm just sitting there going, look, the fight you did was like between two effeminate baby men. And I'm like, you are like a little baby, watch this! You know? um, 
But yeah, ultimately, it it really needed a, a, a tweak on how how is this going to come to a head between these two guys? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I won't go into the whole characterization thing because you guys can just go read that on my newsletter. Uh, um, but ultimately, everything revolved around who is Henry? What kind of guy is he? And thanks to a lot of this character work where we, we refined his, uh, his attitude and how he's going to be reacting and how he does have a short temper, um, but he is still a very competent, you know, kind of guy. Uh, it, it went into Popeye territory and uh, ended up looking pretty much like, you know, he just, he just joined. He's a, he's a strapping, young, excited E2, you know, before he <laughs> eventually goes on to uh, become Master Chief. I, I, now I want the, the Halo AU with Henry and Master Chief's outfit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Different Master Chief, but no less badass. We, speaking of AUs, we actually do have a question about that, but I think that is going to be something that we pick up with on the next episode of Off the Cuff. Guys, thanks so much for listening and for watching. Jess, thank you for joining me for this. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And we are not done. So, guys, we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for listening and for watching. See you next time.